Okay, so we're going to go over the legislative branch, which pretty much is Congress, and it deals pretty much extensively with Article One of the Constitution, because Article One, if you remember, deals with the legislative branch. So this is how Congress is organized. If you remember from the Great Compromise, we had a bicameral body, so there's two houses. There's the Senate and there's the House. Um, the Senate has 100 members, and if you think about 50 states, each state gets two members. That's how they get 100. Uh, the lower house is set at 435. Don't know why they picked 435, but they just picked 435. Uh, it's based on the population of each state. So the more your population, the more how the more representatives you have in the house. Congress meets inside the U.S. Capitol building in Washington D.C. That is this building that a lot of times you see on a lot of things when people think about D.C. Um, terms of Congress. The meeting periods are for two-year terms. Okay, when we say terms here, we're not talking about the terms of the senators or the representative production. Like these are actual congressional terms. Like Congress runs for two-year periods, so it starts on January third of odd-numbered years, and then it lasts for two years. So each Congress is given a number to identify which term it is. For so for twenty twenty-one, we are on Congress one seventeen. That is where the hundred seventeenth Congress. Um, the House of Representatives, there are 13 districts for 13 representatives in the House. They serve two-year terms. Uh, this changes over time as population increases or decreases. So if our population went down, we would not have 13 representatives anymore. We have fewer. If our population continues to grow and we grow drastically, then we may end up with 14 or 15. Okay. Um, we had our 13th member added in 2000 because we grew and some other states didn't. Okay. We fall under District 7, which is where Columbus County is at, and we are represented by David Ruzer. Here's a map of the 7th Congressional District in North Carolina. Okay. You see it kind of covers most of southeastern North Carolina. Now, North Carolina has 15 electoral votes. That's because we have 13 House of Representative members and two Senate members. So 13 plus 2 gives us 15. Um, the census is a population count. It takes place every 10 years. It makes sure that every district includes roughly the same number of constituents. Um, each House of Representatives member basically represents somewhere around 190 to 200,000 people in North Carolina. Um, now, states can abuse this process by gerrymandering to increase the voting strength of a particular group. And what I mean by that is if you look at these maps, these are gerrymandering. So like, they don't just draw like, okay, here's this one section, this be section two. They draw it all kind of funky and wonky, and they do that because they want the votes of these people who live in this specific part of town, um, whether they be white, black, Hispanic, Asian, you pick it, rich, poor. They are trying to hit on a specific group that is voting, and that's gerrymandering. Um, they are drawing the map to benefit one particular party. Also, here's some that happened in North Carolina a while back. Um, in 1992, so you can see where it gerrymandered all the way down, and again, really weird. Like you would think a district would be like right here, maybe a district right here, but no, they just have one skinny, really weirdly mapped district, and it's called gerrymandering. Okay, so the Senate, um, there's an equal number from each state. They serve six-year terms. The elections are staggered. Only a third are up for re-election at any one time. It ensures stability and continuity. If a senator dies, the governor appoints someone to fill the vacancy until the next election. Okay, now those of you who are observant probably realize that this picture changed. That is because Tom Tillis is now the other senator. Richard Burr is still a senator. So it's Richard Burr and Tom Tillis who are the two senators from North Carolina. Now, Governor Rod Blagojevich impeached or was impeached on January 30, 2009 and removed from office. This is because when President Barack Obama became uh, president, he was a senator. Um, so it would have been up to the governor to appoint the new senator. Unfortunately, the governor did something illegal, such as selling the senator's seat. And since that was illegal, then he was impeached and removed from office. Okay. It's not how that's supposed to work. He's supposed to just appoint somebody else who you know, is going to do a good job. Um, so leaders in Congress, you have the majority party and you have the minority party. The majority party is the political party to which more than half the members belong. Minority party, political party to which everybody else belongs. Okay. 
Someone is chosen in each part, the House and the Senate, to lead these parties. Each House then picks a leader to be the Speaker of the House and direct their activities. So the Speaker of the House is Nancy Pelosi. Um, the order of like importance here, if you know, the President and the Vice President were to die in Air, Air Force One, you know, let's say the airplane went down, both of them died, then the Speaker of the House becomes President. So the Speaker of the House is the third in line for the presidency. This is what they make every year. Um, 223,500, and then here's an actual list that goes a little bit further past the Speaker of the House. It's the President, Vice President, Speaker of the House, um, President Pro Tem of the Senate, and then the Secretary of State, who is the basically the head of the cabinet. So Vice President Kamala Harris presides over the Senate. Vice President can vote only to break a tie. So again, remember we have 100 members in the Senate. So if it comes down to a 50-50 tie, then the Vice President is the tiebreaker. Um, the president pro tempore acts as the chairperson of the Senate. And if you remember, that is the person who is fourth in line for the presidency if something were to happen to the president, the president, the vice president, and the speaker of the house. So majority and minority floor leaders in each house for their parties. Um, they speak on issues, push bills along, help try and sway votes. Uh, the party whips are the people who help the floor leaders by making sure legislators are present for key votes, because if you're not there, you can't cast your vote. So the whips are there to like whip people up and make sure that they're present so they can get their vote in. Um, qualifications to be a senator or to be a representative for the House. For a senator, you have to be at least 30 years old. You have to live in the state that you're going to represent. You have to have been a U.S. citizen for at least nine years, and then you can serve six-year terms. Okay, And there's no term limit as of yet. There, It's under legislation right now. Um, it's a bill. Probably won't pass, but... Uh, they are looking at putting in term limits. But as of right now, you can serve six-year term from now until you know, whenever. Same thing with the House of Representatives. Um, their requirements or qualifications to be a representative is 25 years old. You must live in the state you represent, been a U.S. citizen for at least seven years, and then you can serve two-year terms from now into perpetuity, basically forever. Okay. Makeup of Congress. Nearly half of the people who are in Congress are lawyers. Almost all of them have college degrees, and a lot of them are joiners, which means they're active in some type of community organization where they're from. Salary, congressmen and women make $174,000 a year. Um, they get free office space, free parking, free trips to their home states. They send job-related mail without paying postage, so no stamps. Um, it's called a franking, franking privilege. Uh, they have low-cost life insurance, and they have the use of a gymnasium, special restaurants, and a medical clinic. Some additional privileges. Uh, the Constitution grants senators and representatives a little bit of immunity or legal protection in certain situations. It allows them to do or say what they believe is right without fear of interference. Um, this is known as the speech or debate clause. Okay. Personal staff. Members of Congress need help, so they hire personal staffs. This usually means running one or more offices. Um, they gather infinite information on new bills. They handle requests from voters. They deal with news reporters. They deal with lobbyists. Um, lobbyists are people who are hired by power groups to influence their decisions. So think of like McDonald's, Coke, uh, the NRA. Those are all private groups that a lot of times will hire lobbyists to try and sway certain things on bills to make it more favorable for them. Okay. Uh, they work for re-election of an official, even though law requires them to do it on their own time. Okay. Interns and pages, uh, these are basically students who come from the home state where that person is elected. Interns are people who handle research and office duties. Pages are people who deliver messages and run errands. Okay. Staff or committees, staff draft or outline bills. Um, they gather information, they organize the committee hearings, and they negotiate with lobbyists. So committee work. There's a system of committees developed to handle the thousands of bills proposed at any one time. Three types of congressional committees. One is standing, one is temporary, one is joint. Um, the standing committees are permanent. They are there forever and always. The temporary committees are short-term, usually for specific goals. Um, and then joint committees are specific issues that are done by both houses. Okay. Um, a conference committee is a special kind of joint committee that is used to help members of the House and Senate agree on one version of a bill. Here are some of the standing committees. 
um, in the House, you have agriculture, appropriations, armed services, and budget. Um, and then some of the select special ones are intelligence, which falls under the House, homeland, which falls under the House, security, which falls under the Senate, aging, which falls under the Senate, um, and then some of the standing committees that are specifically just under the Senate. Agriculture, appropriations, armed services, banking, budgeting, and then joint committees that fall under both, economics, printing, taxation, library. Committee assignments, they try to get elected to committees that affect people who elected them. So, for example, if I were a senator or representative from an agricultural state, I would want to be on the agricultural committee. Um, some example, farm areas serve on agricultural committees. <clears throat> Places with a lot of factories serve on labor committees. Um, it's a sign of prestige to be on the committee. Uh, there's a seniority system of who gets the preferred spots, um, meaning who gets to be put on the committees. And then the senior majority party member usually wins the role of chairperson. So the person who's been in Senate or the House of Representatives the longest and who belongs to the majority party typically becomes chairperson. Um, one of the responsibilities is to maintain Library of Congress. <clears throat> one copy of every book that's published in the U.S. is kept here. Okay, finance and budget. There's the GAO or the General Accounting Office. It investigates spending activities of federal agencies, federal programs, and recommends ways to improve spending of the national government. And then you have the Congressional Budget Office, or the CBO, which provides information to Congress when they sit down to come up with the budget for the government. Three major jobs of Congress are lawmaking, casework, and then help the district or state. For the lawmaking, it seems pretty simple. You write, introduce bills, committee work, listen to input on the bill, and then vote on the bills for casework help people in state or district deal with federal government, um, increases popularity, also insight to how executive programs are working, and then help district or state by bringing federal money or federal projects into the area. So helping the district or state, these are through public works, um, it's appropriation, appropriations for spending, such as post offices, dams, military bases, veteran hospitals, mass transit systems, all of these things equal jobs and money for those areas. Um, grants and contracts. Congressmen make sure that their state or district gets their share, their fair share of federal grants and contracts. Example, making on the uniforms. <clears throat> this is known as pork barrel projects. Um, it's dipping into the pork barrel or AKA the federal treasury and pulling out a piece of fat for your area. Um, here's a political cartoon showing that. Was Um, now, Congress doesn't specifically have the ability to award contracts and grants that deals with the executive branch, but they can use their influence to kind of sway who ends up getting it. 